G'day, how you going? Ian Aplos here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my live video here. I want to um, do a beautiful coastal scene. Now this is going to have elements a beginner can grasp to learn how to paint. So you've got a nice landscape, waterscape, seascape, oceanscape to hang on your wall. And there's a lot of elements in here that you can achieve. Get some retarder. I'm going to do the sky area first. That photo you saw, I've got a reference photo here. I'm going off a reference photo today. I don't need it, but I'm just going to show you what you can do. It's just a coastal scene. I'm, it's got wet. You know how the water retracts from the sand and comes back into the ocean and it leaves that damp patch? I want to get that in this painting because I find when I'm doing... I don't have any here. Some of those paintings, I'm not putting that in there where I should be. And I want to show you these elements that you can do. So we need a paintbrush. And I'm going to retard the top area because I don't want it where I'm going to paint. So let me just, while you're way back over there, let me get this sorted first, okay? So we'll put our horizon line there, break it off. And then we'll start putting our headland out there, whatever it's called, our There we go. And I won't come any lower than that with the retarded paint because it can hinder when you're trying to paint over it. Even if you dry it with a hairdryer within the same moments of time, it can be a bit awkward to Get your paint to stick. So I'm putting that there because I only want the retarder where I want it. But we've got a coastal scene there. That's the best I can get it. It's not clear. But we're going to have the ocean and then the coast, okay? But that's me reference picture. I'm not going to paint that exact, okay? So you'll get an idea what I do. I'm going to put my sky in it because I know how to do a sky. So I'm going to put my sky in there. I'm going to turn that backlight out so we don't get any too bad reflections there. I'll just move that out of the way so we don't get any hindrance. Now down here, I've got my craft paint and I'm going to mix it with retarder and that's going to keep that wet longer so as I can bloody paint a beautiful sky with some... I'll put some clouds in it. In that reference there was no clouds in there, but you know what? I want clouds, so I like to crisscross this all the way into that canvas tooth. Careful not to go beyond my masking tape. I love painting on canvas. People paint on paper, canvas, whatever you. Um, I prefer canvas because you get a way better job. Now I'm just going to stroke that left and right like this until I'm happy with that. There we go. Beautiful, ready to put our sky in there. Love it, love it, love it. That didn't take long at all, eh? We're going to get some cerulean blue down here. What I should have done, but I didn't, is get these colours all on the palette before I start. I don't know why I bloody don't. I've got some quinacridone magenta. And I've got some mid-tone grey in a tube. If you don't have these colours, use something similar. Okay, uh, if you don't have a mid-tone grey, you can just mix your own out of black and white. Now, I've just wiped that brush, I haven't washed it, and I'm going to load that up and get me sky colour in there, okay? We don't want it too bright and cartoony looking. Alright, I'm going to get this up the top, and I'm going to crisscross it. As I'm bringing it down, it's getting lighter and lighter to that horizon line right down there, eh? Right? See that? Look at that, and it's nice and darker at the top. Now, you crisscross it to pull it, to spread it, manipulate it, and get that where you want. And with a bit of luck, it's not too cartoony. It looks kind of realistic, like a realistic sky colour. Got bits of white in there, baby blue. That's cerulean blue. I'm going to post the colours in the description below. So for those people watching the replay, you can look down there. And I'll have the size of the canvas as well, which is 30 by 42 centimetres or 12 inch by 16 and a half inch. Cool, sky's done. Didn't take long at all, eh? Now get back down here. I want to mix a bit of uh, filthy, filthy pollution in the sky, just in the background. So I'm going to get me grey. I've wiped that. 
like a gentleman. I'm going to get the grey, and I want an insy, tinsy, weeny bit of quinacridone magenta. I'll get enough in there till it's the temperament you want. Now that stuff dries dark. That's all I need. See how much I put in there? I put bugger all in there, and there was enough to taint it to that colour. Now horizon, think horizon, it's all here, so I want it to come up there. So I'm going to get it there. This is this is grey, but it does have a hint of that quinacridone magenta in it. I've got it in there. Now I'm going to turn my brush around, and this edge here, I'm going to gradiate into that blue. Okay, so like that. Now lo and behold, there's a light line there. There's a band, you can notice it. So now we've got to distort that by getting some X strokes up there. Getting them up there, and there we go, like that. A bit more, take your time. You don't have to be in a rush like me. I'm always rushing because I'm filming and I like to get things done yesterday. Now once we take the tape off, you're gonna see that polluted area. It's gonna look bloody beautiful, I reckon. All right, back down on the palette, I'm gonna grab myself some titanium white out of the tube. And we want a simple sky. We don't need to overdo it, but I want some clouds in there. So I want to grab a fan brush. Where's my fan brush? There we go. And we're going to put some skies in. Put some skies in the cloud. We're going to put some clouds in the sky. Go on, oh, Leon, getting tongue tied here. So pick it up in my fan brush, just like so. I love applying them. My clouds, that is with a fan brush. You can use a filbert, whatever you want. And I want some beautiful, I won't go in here. I want a body here, like a bowl. I've done this before, creating a bowl, getting the bottom there, and it's picking up the sky colors. Okay, boom. Oh, I better grab a, a um, what do you call it, a blending brush. I'm going to use a two inch blending brush. So I'll get these from the hardware store. And I want to create a bum on that cloud, tapping it, finding the bottom there, or oh, get some lineal perspective in these clouds there. Get rid of those bits, take your time. There we go. The, the bums are on there, I think, yes. Now I can blend that up like a cloud and twist that up. Twist that up, leave some boldness there because we're going to put a little bit of, maybe a little bit of weather in here. We'll see how we go. I want this looking like it's coming over our head. Now that white paint that I used, um, see like I said that reference picture doesn't have clouds but this one will. That white paint that I had in this brush, I've got to wash that and then rinse it so as I can reload it again. And we're not going to have any contaminated paint because we want to keep our clouds pristine as possible. All right, now. <clears throat> this is those radiating clouds. I'll tell you the name of them in a minute, but just let me concentrate on getting them on the canvas here. There we go. Now these clouds are called, uh, where's my glasses? I'm just grabbing my glasses here. Uh, Alto cumulus, or there's even cirro cumulus. Alto cumulus or cirro cumulus clouds, these ones are. Now I've got my blend and brush again. Good afternoon, everybody, says Angela Jones. And these bits here that I flicked up, Actually, I'll grab a smaller one because they're smaller body clouds. Okay. And we'll try and flick them up like those auto cumulus look. Okay, just like that. There we go. Distort them. Get them up there. I hope my hand ain't too much in the way. Get something out there. Beautiful sky above the ocean coastal scene here. Look at that. Just wipe your brush as you pick up paint in your blending. There we go. 
there, there. So just softening those into the sky. Does that look like clouds to you? Yeah, that looks, it's a bit overdone, isn't it? Golly, I'll try and kill some of that so it's not so loud. There we go, look what I'm doing. I'm just pushing them into that wet cerulean blue there still. Oh, I see maybe a little something here just to break up this lonely spot. And I'll get him all the way down there. Like that. Okay, now I've got that smaller fan brush and I'm going to pick up the mixture of grey that I had, but I've run out. That's not quite enough there, so I'll put a bit more down there. How long have I been going for? 13 minutes. I like to try and do a live painting probably within an hour if I can. So I'm getting a bit of grey, let it mix with that magenta colour. And just mainly this big one here. We'll put a bit of a um, weather and darkness within that one, if we can. Just giving it some dimension. Okay, and I'll sit that within that cloud body. There we go. <clears throat> cool, it's broken that up a bit. And this one here has the magenta in it, so it's quite, I've got to get a bit more here. It's just not quite sitting there the way I want it. It's breaking up the horizon line. There we go, look at that. Oh, I love that. I'm going to leave it like that. How's that looking in the monitor? Fine. All right. Now we'll take the tape off. Okay. And we're ready to put... See, I'm finished with the sky. That's all me blending done. Um, I just need to soften that ridge of paint under there so we don't have a ridge in our work when we're drying it. Now I'm going to get my hair dry and just dry this a bit. I'll do that first. So what I'm going to do, just the bottom half here, where I want the land to be, and I don't want to be fighting retarded paint, I'll just mask that up, okay? So I'm just going to put this there, somewhere about there, okay? That'll do. Because I want to get all this water done now. I want the water meeting the sand. All right, so I'm going to grab some, oh, grab a bit of turquoise, where's my knife? There we go, we'll grab a bit of turquoise. Don't need too much, Ian, don't get carried away, you're not painting a mule. And I maybe want a bit of darker paint there. I'll use... I've got it out, so I'll use some more of the cerulean blue. Now I need a bit more of this here, so I'm mixing up some more. I want this paint to blend, so I'm putting a little bit of white down there, and I need to wash this brush because that's what I'm going to apply it with. So let me wash it. I've got a beater bucket here. Now I'm going to do the bottom half of the painting, the top half done. I'll give this brush, give it a good severe flogging in the beater bucket once you've washed it. That's ready to rock and roll again, beautiful. Okay, and there is some retarder left in here. I might put a few more drops. I don't want it too much. Just enough to, probably don't even need that. But this is going to help our colours on the bottom now, okay? Get that in there. And it's pretty much going to be the blue meeting the sand, which is, let me grab a um, pencil, just so I can kind of put a mark here where I want it. So about there, and here, somewhere like that. Get this up there. Mainly in the water half, so I get beautiful, merging, wet looking colors. There's not too much here, but this just helps the paint sit 
slide together, blend together, merge together. Beautiful. There we go. There, that'll do. Beautiful. Now, I want some of that turquoise. Hopefully I said that right. Now, I'm grabbing just the turquoise at the moment. And I've got this... Just somewhere there. Don't worry about that horizon line being sharp and in focus. You follow these paintings the way I show you, you can't go wrong if you want to paint the way I paint. Pick up a bit more of that. We're getting this turquoise into this corner here. That's pretty much all the way there. That's the turquoise. I'll pull that. I will see if I can Get rid of that white line there. There we go. Come on. Come on, you can do it. There you go. There you go. You the man. There you go. All right. See that white paint I put on? That's allowing all this to move without clagging up on me. Just in that corner there. Now I'm going to pick up the cerulean blue. Get some of that up the top there to make it nice and dark. Just along here. Right up there, yeah, right along there. Just like that. And just let that fade down. Nice coastal scene here. Something like that. How's that? Now, Grabbing some of this magenta and that purple grey colour there. Grab it. I should have wiped the brush, your dag. Not to worry. I'll get a bit more grey. Where's my grey tube? There it is. So let me put a bit more grey down here. Because I'm seeing some greys with magenta there. That's what I'm seeing, so it's what I want to put there. There we go. A little bit more magenta bit more. It's taken the warmth from the sky. And we've got pretty much this bit here with this colour. Oh yeah, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. So I'm just going to cross that in there, all the way over here. That'll do it. Now I'll just bleed it. What I mean by bleed it is pull it, give it that wet, watery look. There we go. Done. Now I've got to wash this brush again. Thank you very much, Paula. You are an absolute darling. Cyber hugs and kisses to you, sweetheart, for that super chat donation. All right. Now that I've washed that again. Because I want to put the sand colour on now. I'll just give this brush a good severe flogging again. Ready to go again. So now back down here, I'm using good old, what do you call it, yellow ochre, yellow ochre there, and this will be me sand colour. So I'll start from here, get it right onto that tape there. Get it to that green, get it to that greeny blue watery colour. Okay. And now start merging the two colours together. Mainly there like that. Don't bring one too far onto the other side if you can help it. I want some more of this up there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we've got that bleed together, maybe a bit more down here. There we go, because the angle of the perspective is going to go down to about there. This is going to get that bullshit going once we put that water rippling on there. Now we want a darker aspect here. So let's grab some of the 
Let's try some of the quinacridone magenta in that and see what we get. Yeah, a bit more. I need some more yellow ochre actually. There's not quite enough there. And I want a bit of burnt umber in there as well. Not too much. Don't forget, I'll, I'll write these colours down in the description below. So if you're watching the replay, they'll be there. Bit of burnt umber in there. I'm making this shadow colour for where the water's retracting on the wet sand. Bit of um, quinacridone magenta there. Um, I'm hoping that's going to source it up a bit. a bit more burn umber come on I should have realized what color I could have used here but even I live and learn now on the picture there this is pretty much all the wet water here from about here I suppose so this is our wet area here coming back so I'm stamping it on like that I'll stamp it on to about there keep it lineal with the horizon line there Stamp it on. There we go. And now we'll... Oh yeah, pull it, pull it, pull it. Oh yeah, right into the water. Pull it into that water. Bang, back there. Bang, back there. Oh, the cat's going crazy out there. Bang, back there. Hopefully this is going to look shit off. A little bit of darkness right down here in. I'm just killing that edge there a little bit with the tip of this brush. There we go. Now I'd like to dry that, but not 100%. Just make it tacky. Now we need a flat. I've got some white down there. So what we're going to do now is create all the water washing onto the shore, okay? And I wanted that dry so it's not going to be difficult to achieve. And I'm just working out what brush I can use. So I'm going to use a flat brush. And I've got a scrumbling brush here. Let me find it first. So I'm going to use this one here. Thank you very much, Grace Shack, for your super chat dona donation. Hi, Ian. Amazing painting. Thank you very much, sweetheart. I'm going to put it on with this brush. Use whatever you feel. And I'm going to scrumble it back with that. Now, that's, it might be a bit wet. We'll see. We'll find out. I'm picking up some white on a flat brush. And I'm going to start out here first, which is just all oh, the ocean. Where are we? We've got to get way back here. I've got the water. This is way back in the distance, so this won't be too detailed, okay? Let me get you right in there a bit more. That shadow is not the best, is it? And if this sits on there, great. It means I've dried it enough, which is great. Now I'm going to start shaping it down here. So we've got a, we've got a piece pulling. Get some more paint on your brush, Ian. We've got some here just scooting right out. And there. And then scrumble it back. Scrumble it back. Now we're going to start adding detail because we're getting closer to the front of the painting so to speak okay this is just white paint now we've got some pretty much like this like that just like that see how easy that was and now i'm going to grab this brush that's not finished yet but i'm going to scrumble the left hand side back and leave the right hand side sharp that one's a bit soft so i'll use the same one i put it on there with see and that's why i left the paint a little bit rubbery and not 100 percent dry because it's going to allow this scrumbling action to happen and that sand color is going to look like it's under the water as well so this is just the start of it 
Insert look in there. It's okay, I suppose. Now we've got to get a lot more foam on there. Come on. A lot more foam. Get it all scrumbled back. Scramble it back so it sinks. What it's virtually doing, the surface I'm putting it on, it's sinking that underwater so it looks like it's underwater. I suppose that makes sense, doesn't it? When you sink something underwater, it looks like it's underwater, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I'm really pushing that in, getting it blurry. I'm going to sharpen up the edges later. Is that looking like the part? Oh, see, I can see a bit of a crooked bit right about there. I'll try and work that out. Now we want a big, long, chuffy bit here. And then get this scrambling back into the ocean. Grab my little scrambler, scrumble that back in there, really blend it down, scrumble it down, soften it in there. Yeah, from a distance it looks alright. If you squint your eyes, <laughs> it's not too bad, eh? Uh, there's going to be a lot of foam frothing around here. So I'll get that happening. I'm keeping these strokes left and right, not down this way or that way. That helps with your layout as well. So I've put them on there, grabbing me scrambler and sitting them down there like beautiful motion in the ocean. I hope my hands are not in the way because my hands are what's doing the paint. <clears throat> down here I'm just looking. I might put something on here, right down there, thicker, and then back out here. Pull that left side out into the ocean and go again with the other scrumbling brush. Then later on you can get pure white. This is white but it's got all tainted with all these damp colours underneath. You can grab the pure white and really highlight some of this. So I'm going to say thin there and come a bit fatter here. See, everything's going to a vanishing point, if anything, in my mind. Uh, we'll get that out there, pull him back out here, pull him back, there we go. Just left and right, level with that horizon line, not up and down. Okay, and it doesn't matter how you do this, it'll just look the part anyway. This is an easy way for a beginner to get some motion in your ocean. Okay. Um, I can come back to this now because I want to get the, um, what do you call it, the, the headland out there done before we lose time. So we can come back to that water and muck with that till the cows come home, okay? But that's looking a bit, oh, hang on a minute. The main thing is, what's out here? There's a lot. you got to, there we go. Wipe that on there, just so I can get rid of that hard edge out there. Yeah, beautiful, man. That's it, yeah. Great. I'm happy now. And if I'm happy, you should be happy. Yeah, get in there. Go on, get right in there. Go on, get in there. Yeah, that's it. That'll do for now. We've got to get this headland in. So I'll sit them in the water for now. I'm going to grab Mr. Flat Filbert and quickly grab my burnt umber. Um, what else do we need? Um, and black. So I'll grab the black. Is that black? Yeah, carbon black I've got actually. For those who want to know. I'll bring you down to the palette. Just bear with me a minute. Look at my mess while you wait. I'm just going to dampen my brush. And I've got my burn umber and the black. Just so it's not umber and it's not black, it's a bit of both. And we're going to just quickly 
I'll use a flat as well as that because I want the bottom area looking good. So I'll use the, the flat for the bottom area. I'll get it a bit more wetter. And you want to bring the headland, you don't want it flat. 84 people watching, that's good stuff. You don't want it flat, you want to sort of bring it towards us if you can. I know the reference picture is reasonably flat, but bugger that, I don't want to do it my way. If you're an artist, you make it the way you feel. So we're going to bring this out there in the water, that's fine. And then we'll bring this, it can be crooked but level, if you know what I mean. Okay, crooked but level. Oh, the cats are on the tin roof. Or well, Bernard is, he's, he loves to get my attention because he loves being fed. Now I'm just gonna scrunch that into there. See, if that had all that retarded paint under it, that'll be hell to do what I'm doing now. So I'll quickly get this all scrunched in. Pull your hand back on your handle and you can see where you're going. This is getting right into that linen, it's beautiful. I'm gonna fix the top of that up in a minute, don't worry. Get this all the way over that area there and bring it down there. Now, if there's a bit of a white edge there, I wanna get rid of that. Now that's all scrambled in. Now I'll grab that filbert brush and load it up and get me trees here and there. Gotta wet that a bit more. This is easy to do. Now, now get the, the canopy tops there, however you want them. Just detail that, take your time. Very, get something out there. These are so easy to do, they're just fun to do and they're easy to do. And the good thing about them is when you finish to paint, you can always sit back and look at it and work out how to do another painting from what you've just done. All right, now this needs a dry, so as um, our other colors will sit on top there, okay? Get back and have a look at that. You can see how that polluted area out there has kind of come into play. I'm just picking up some of the cadmium yellow and I'm getting some burnt umber mixed with that because I love the dead underwood colour to create that realism in your greens. This is a beautiful colour to have. So we'll get that going. Somewhere there like that. And then I'll quickly mix up my green as well. This is not too much green green. It's going to be quite dull green. It's in the distance there. Okay, got that one. Forest green. Let's grab our forest green. I'll put that down there. And what brush can I use for that? I'll try. Oh no, I won't try that one. What's this one? No, it's too soft. I'm just looking for a brush. Oh, here's me feel, but uh, green. So we've got our forest green. I better grab a bit more yellow. Otherwise, I'm not going to have enough. There we go. Uh, now we're going to do it with the green first. So grab the green with some yellow green there. I mean the yellow, sorry, cad yellow. And I'm mixing up the temperament I want, which is pretty much, I'll get enough of it there, pretty much that flavour there. And there is pockets on which I will do before, so I can put the foliage over them as well. So there is pockets of yellow ochre. And I'll use a little brush here. And the white, grab some of this just to get some limestoney colors. Need some more white, don't I? Limestoney colors in that headland as well to create the minor details that give it that realistic look. So 
So we'll get some of this out there. Just keep mixing the dark and the lights till you get what you want. There we go. I'm looking at the picture. There's a so we're just going to do what the, was in the picture there. So there's a few bits mainly down. I better chisel the bottom up so I don't make a goobly mess. There's a quite a bit down here. There's all sorts of stuff down here. Break it along a bit. Keeping it level, but crooked, okay? And there's just bits of, um, building, rocks, whatever, all in there. So I'm just gonna map bits and pieces in here, like get a rough idea from the reference picture. And then we'll be able to close all this in with the foliage bit there. It's not really much there, but I'll put something there anyway, just because I want to. Now let's hope this filbert brush is going to be big enough. Otherwise I've got to... Yeah, now I want the blacks. Well, not the blacks, it's that brown, actually. You want to leave a lot of that in there as well. Don't, don't kill all that. And we're going to sit this over that limestone colour there, bring it back up here and there. I think what I'll do, I'll wash that other filbert and use that because I'll be there a month of Sundays waiting to use that tiny little thing, eh? Alrighty, let's give this a go. Yeah, that's better. Just mixing up a bit more. Boom, boom, boom. Where are we? and try and make shapes that kind of represent tree canopies, you know? Come down there a bit. This is, this is very forgiving, this layer. This first layer of green over the dark background is very forgiving because you can get away with just getting it on any old way. That's what I told my son yesterday when he was doing a paint and explained that to him so I can explain it to you. Um, don't want it too limey. You can get a bit more forest in there. When we put the um, dead under colour, that's what brings it to life as well. And you can start shaping the, the canopies here within your bush your headland out there let me have a look at that that's okay now i'm going to dry it again how long have we been going for 43 minutes that's not bad not bad Okay, that's dry. What'd you dry it again for? Ian, you're drying the hell out of everything. Well, what it does, it um, allows the next colour that I'm going to do sit on there without mudding up. Now, I'm just going to use that little filbert and that dead under colour that I mixed. This goes underneath most of the foliage that I see. So let's see if we can see what we're doing here. And we've got a lot out here. When this mixes with the green, it just looks more realistic. Um, people will start referring your paintings as photos. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that be funny, eh? I had had the odd person say I, I thought it was a photo, but really I think they're just whistling in your pocket, aren't they? But it's all good, it's all good. See now, we're getting a lot of dead undergrowth here. Find the undergrowth where you feel it would be. Even if you study pictures, enough in your mind, you sort of get an idea when you're doing a painting, an actual shape. And once you've succeeded with the shape, um, you can do it in every painting and it'll look like what you're trying to paint. That's like with portraits. When I was, I've always drawn with lead pencil and when I was drawing someone that you want to identify, such as 
I was drawing Sylvester Stallone a lot, and he had a distinct lip, muscle, lip, and things going on within his face. And when you get those characters right, um, you can do it with your eyes shut, and then you can just say, yeah, I'll draw Sylvester Stallone, and you know those characters, you put it down. That principle is the same when you look at like trees or something out there, or shadows within trees, learn what they are, and then once you put them into a painting, your conviction is so much more convincing. You have a more convincing conviction. Okay, we'll bring some of that over there. I'll detail this a little bit better off camera when I've got time, but I just want to get what I can done within an hour here. So I'm trying to sink back those white bits as well, or those limestone coloured bits. Can you see what that colour's done? And then when we highlight it, it'll just look more realistic. So to highlight it, I'll wash that filbert brush. And see the yellow there? I want more of this just to highlight it. I'll pinch some of that. Okay. Now this is going to hide all the stuff you did before, but you don't want to go too crazy with this. Okay, you want to sort of see where things are and place them. Very gingerly. See, I'll leave a bit there. Go above a lot of that brown that you put on, that dead underwood colour. The finer you get these brush strokes, the more realistic it can look. And you'll just see what I'm meaning. Now we'll get this coming down in front of there, like lights hitting it there, over there. Some of it over here. Squint your eyes or if you look through a phone camera, it's a really good way to judge where your painting's going and what way you need to adjust for your detail and stuff like that. How's that going? That's kind of, let me have a look in the camera there. Okay. Getting there anyway. I just didn't want it too green cartoony, if you know what I mean. Just little bits here and there. Don't stamp the whole thing over. You gotta try and find those areas and pockets to detail with this. How's that looking? Not bad, I suppose. That's okay. Yeah, I'll muck with that later off camera. Let me have a look. That's not a bad headland. It's looking kind of realistic. Now I want my flat brush and see the um, sand here, it's looking a bit on its own, so I'm grabbing some of that colour, which is down here, and some of a darker colour, just getting a darker colour, because I just looked in the um, reference picture and it gives me an idea what I can add to mine. And we're just going to, I'll wipe that off on there. Put some bits of darker areas within this sand. Keep them lineal. Something out here maybe. Just a long way away. Ah, where are we? Something down here. Don't get carried away. I'm starting to get carried away there. Now I'm just kind of wetting this edge here. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Can you see what I'm doing? The camera's probably just not in the way there. But I don't want it too dark. This is just that wet sand retracting. Just using a flat. 
Does that look wet and retracting? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. I can use my little, um, what do you call it? Script liner and that same darker color just to probably sit some of this whitewash down, twist it, shake your hand, get it right on the edge though. You don't want it nice and fat, you want it nice and wiggly and it just kind of helps sit that wash down. There we go, we could probably put a darker shadow under there. I don't know, somewhere there. I won't put this colour out there, but you get an idea. 81 there, that's okay. Oh, we've got a bit of time, so what I'll do is I'll grab my little round brush that I was looking for again that I did have. Here it is here. I'm going to grab the pure white. I've got enough on my palette here, but it's all contaminated. And is that a round brush? I'll find out. I'm just stippling the edge of this round brush. See there how it's stippling? <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll get some. Oh, it's a bit. There we go. I'm just trying to. Get that frothy stuff going on there. Bet you want bits of blue in between it. How's that looking? And you want to kind of bring it back into the water as well, Ian. There we go. Get this edge nice and loud and white right along here. Right along there. Where else are we? Along here. It's putting things in front and behind everything now. This is what I was talking about before. I said if I've got time, I'll get this in there. Up there. about done people I'll put an autograph on here and we'll whack a frame on it and just remember all my tutorial paintings are for sale check out the links in the description below they're all done through PayPal you can become a member of my art group request to become a member there share your artwork there and let everyone know what a wonderful artist you are or what you inspire to be. I'll put Steve's little footprint there. And now we're gonna whack a frame on it. Frames always make a painting pop, don't they, eh? So we'll get this back there. I'll get that distortion out the way. <sighs> Haven't even had a mouthful of my milk since I started. How bad is that? Look at that, eh? That's not bad, is it? We've got a nice coastal ocean scene. We've got a headland out here. Bits of limestone behavior carried on there. That ain't too bad for a beginner to achieve. And just remember, you can do that. Okay? Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this exercise. And just remember, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, good on ya.